Joe uh, from Pushchair Expert. We set up Pushchair Expert about 12 years ago and Pushchair Expert started off as a publication um, and we've grown and grown and grown and now seen as um, the UK's number one pushchair and car seat review site in the UK. Two years ago, um, we launched Pushchair Expert at the Shop, the retail side of the business. Um, so we kind of see things from two angles and we also own native video. So we do a lot of the video content for a lot of the brands, whether it's wheels, seats, baby carriers, etc. So that's it. That's me. That's us. Um, uh, Pushchair Expert, really. Okay, so I'm going to fire some questions at you, Jo, um, that... Um, mm. <laughs> no there's nothing there's nothing tragic um but it might be interesting um if not we just yet go, just, we just go through these so first off um what do you see are the main challenges for the pushchair sector at the moment covid this uh -huh. little pandemic that's the sort of going on that we all know about um i mean for retail it is about stores staying open whether they're able to stay open whether that's going to change for a lot of retailers, it's that unpredictability. You know, we just don't know what the future's going to hold. We know that some stores at the moment have closed because of different tiers. And for the rest of us who are, I suppose, still open, we don't know whether that's going to change next week, the week after, and again, how long that's going to go on for. So the big, big challenge, which is not just pushchair retailers, it's all retailers in the UK, is what's going on with COVID. But that aside, I think for us as nursery retailers, it's about managing the demand from consumers. Um, demand changes, I think, when we go into lockdown, mm. we found that very much so. Um, and it, it's just been able to manage that. That's the big, big challenge. Okay, so what can retailers do with this big challenge that we're experiencing to support businesses and their customers. So coming at it from both angles. I think when we first went into lockdown, it was about everybody having fresh eyes because business was going to change and inevitably it did change. The way consumers shopped during lockdown was very, very different. Um, the movement to online for a lot of people because they had to um, was there very very much but it it also is that an impact that is is that a change that is going to carry on as more and more people are introduced to online shopping and it almost becomes the norm so I think businesses need to embrace that whether we want to or not um the power of social media as most people will know is massive um I know that I've seen more and more retailers doing more on their social platforms whether it's Facebook Instagram Twitter, Pinterest, I've seen some great things on TikTok, which you will never see me on TikTok. I think I'm far too old for TikTok. But there's some, been some, people have been quite experimental with it and worked out what works. And what works for one retailer won't necessarily work for another retailer. Mm. Um, so I think the social side of it, offering different ways to shop for the consumers, you know, when you can't come into store, whether it's one-to-one -one video conferencing, being able to be on the end of the phone, Facebook live videos and that's that interaction I think that has changed a lot of people's businesses recently. Okay so what can the push chair brands do to support the independents? So I think I have to say personally that there has been great support everybody's been learning we've all been learning together and I think it's been about communication Retailers have done some things that have worked really well and other things that have worked less so, and you don't know until you try it. And I think it's been the same for the brands. But one of the things that made a big difference for a lot of retailers were brands that started to offer dropship free of charge where they hadn't done it before or there had been a charge. And I think that helped an awful lot of retailers. We're quite lucky because we have a lot of storage space, but for a lot of retailers, that storage is a massive, massive thing. If you think about the size of a pushchair, it's a big box and you don't need that many before you've filled a room um, if you've got a, st a stock room. So I think that's really, really helped. I think the other thing um, that brands have done to really help the retailers is there's been in-store offers when we've been open, um, communication, providing videos. Uh, there's some brands who've literally given retailers word for word social posts, which a lot of retailers have used. You know, and that helps sometimes just to plant a seed and give ideas. So I think it, it, we've all learned together. 
And the big thing is about communication, really. Retailers talking to brands, brands talking to retailers. You know, if there is a delay with stock, we need to know. And the earlier that we know, the easier it is for us to manage uh, customers' expectations. I think that was the question you asked anyway. <laughs> it was. Um, okay, so the best examples of partnerships between retailers and brands that you've seen, what sort of examples can you give of um, the way they've worked together? Well, I think the dropship's been a big thing for a lot of retailers, the ability to order something and get it drop shipped from the brand the next day or in the next couple of days, you know, or even if it's seven days, as long as you can let your customer know. I think that's been a great partnership that they've done. I th also think the provision of videos that they've done, um, there's been some great ones that are really, your brands have done the videos from their front rooms. Mm. And I think that really makes those brands quite personable. So instead of being very, very commercial, um, you know, in a studio, et cetera, it's given those brands almost a personality. And I think consumers have really enjoyed that. And it's a good thing to react, you know, to react on social media. I've also seen some brands that have gone live with a retailer, which again, it's about bringing those two things together, which we couldn't normally do. Mm. Keeping it real, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It's kind of taking ourselves into the living room of, you, of your customer and the brands into the living room of your customer. And let's yeah. face it, during yeah. lockdown, pregnant people, because a lot of them haven't gone back to work, they've got a lot of time on their hands to do a lot of research. And yeah. we've answered a lot of questions, which I'm sure any retailers on will agree that we've answered a lot of, lot, a lot of questions recently. Okay, that's interesting. So going back to the social media and everything, um, what do you, how do you see the importance of digital marketing um, where supporting the stores is concerned? Massive, absolutely, you know, massive. Every single person who is at the age where they're pregnant and even a little bit older like myself, you know, everybody's got a smartphone. Everybody's smartphone goes everywhere with them. If they're in the car traveling, they're there looking at it, whether they're at home on the sofa and, you know, somebody's watching a film. You know, women are there on their smartphones. I know I get into trouble for it quite regularly and I'm sorry if you're watching William but you know it, it is what we do so that support from brands and retailers again having that opportunity to get almost into that smartphone is so important mm. um, and it's, it's just about brand awareness as well so for the brands I think it works really really well for the brands because if I'm talking about a particular push chair it doesn't it, it is I know I'm talking about Vista that I've got in the background there I'm talking about a Vista and it might plant a seed for somebody who's not ready to purchase yet. But again, you've got to keep drip feeding, drip feeding, drip feeding. They do say that a consumer needs to see a brand three times before they actually remember it. So again, it's looking at that omni-channel um, omni focus and support for brands, retailers, etc. I think it's more like 10 times when you get to my age. <laughs> <laughs> 15 when you get to my age. <laughs> <laughs> okay so what do you look for in brands that you stock um so there's kind of like a two-part question what do you look for in brands that you stock and what tips would you give brands if they wanted to onboard a retailer like you so number one is you have to be approachable <laughs> really i think this industry is all about relationships 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 and it's about building trust so the brand has to trust the retailer, the retailer has to trust the brand, and it is about being open. And I think for me, when I'm inviting another brand in store, I check out I check out their social channels, I check they're active on social media, because as I said, I think that's really, really important. We, I also check whether people are searching for them or searching for a particular product, mm -hmm. but it could be a new brand that's a new brand to market, which obviously is not going to focus as high as your more established brand, but it's looking at what they are planning on doing moving forwards to get that brand out there in front of, in front of the consumers, because it's all very well. You might have something in store, um, but if nobody's uh, heard of it, that is another barrier to getting that person to purchase. And I'm not saying that you can't have something that is brand new in store because often having something brand new in store that no one else has got is incredibly exciting. 
but then you have to take that on board and put the onus on yourself to do as much marketing as you can. So if you can have like that synergy between the brand and the retailer or brand and retailers as a whole, that's when you see more and more success. And you do see brands literally go from not being known to being known pretty quickly when they get that right. Mm, yeah, okay. So um, top tips then for retailers. What have you got? What do you think they should do? Oh, we can do it. We can all do it together. I think at the moment, because there is so much that is so unknown I think as a retailer you need to have a sense of humor yeah. you know when when things go wrong you need to try and um, look on the bright side of things maintain those relationships with you know there is a there is such a strong retailer presence in the nursery industry you know and I have to say people are very very supportive of each other you know we all forget to order something or we order too many and the fact that retailers will help um, each other out with that I think is incredible I don't know whether that happens in all industries but it's something that I I think we're quite a family in this in this industry um, and I just think embrace the change you know things things do change things are changing we don't know how much more they're going to change but I would predict quite a lot over the next 12 months I wish I had a crystal ball but it is my top tip is just look at how consumers are shopping and try and embrace that and try and work with consumers. So, okay, so you haven't got a crystal ball. This one's going to be really difficult for you to answer. Because <laughs> no. the next question, I want to know your forecast for the year ahead. So, uh, who knows? What are your forecasts for the year ahead? <laughs> Get a pencil, roll it around and just close your eyes and stab, I think might be, might be a good idea. Um, yeah. I don't think COVID's going away over the next 12 months. I s wish it was, but I certainly don't think it is. Um, I think that those people who are pregnant are probably more nervous about COVID than a lot of people, and quite rightly so, because we don't know the effect of um, COVID on pregnant people and, and babies yet. You know, we don't really know a lot, and I, I think sort of plan and forecast, you've... <laughs> I think you've got a plan that we're probably going to go into some kind of lockdown if we're not already in lockdown. So that needs to be in our thinking moving forward. You know, if we don't go into lockdown, then, you know, great. We're, we're not at the moment, but I'm pretty sure we will do at some point. So I think it it's just forecasting, planning for the next year is, I don't know, cross your fingers, hope for the best and, you know, just keep those communication that communication open with brands or the retailers, you know, and people like yourselves, really. Okay, so we've got some guest questions now. These are. Oh, please, please be nice. Please be nice. <laughs> None of them are mean. Don't worry. <laughs> so, um, first of all, we've got Joe. Can you advise on the trend for compact strollers, given the restrictions on travel that exist now? It's it's a funny one because when we first went into lockdown, um, and I can only speak about ourselves, I can't speak about all retailers, but obviously we saw a drop in people buying those compact strollers. You know, people weren't out and about so much. However, once that um, realisation that we were going to remain in lockdown and people were told to go out and take their daily exercise and things, we found that people were buying strollers with a heavier weight for toddlers because they were taking them out for longer walks than they might have done before. And I think for a lot of people with toddlers, um, just getting out of the house, if you're stuck in the house, is massively, massively important. So we saw a big, it, it kind of died off and then it started increasing again. But obviously, you know, you've got problems of fitting it in the boot. Um, I can see that somebody, I think it's the same person has asked about, um, fitting in the car boot after the purchase, which, you know, it, it is always going to be a problem. If you can't go into store, you can't physically go into store to try it, then the only option you have is to order it online. Um, you know, we mm. do free returns. And yes, it's really frustrating if somebody returns it because they don't fit in the boot. And you think, well, why didn't you just look up the dimensions? Surely it's not that tricky. You know, it would be fantastic if you could do a car boot 
pushchair stroller comparison. So if they could put in what car they have and say which ones would fit in that car, that would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah, just, and uh, we I'll leave that in your hands. Of, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we do get a lot of messages. You know, I, I've got a uh, know Renault Zoe. What will fit in the boot? And yeah. you know, we try and remember we've got a bit of a list in the office of like smaller car boots that we've managed to get the stuff off. Um, we'll do some research you know you, you can you can find the measurements of any car you can find the measurements of any stroller folded but sometimes it's putting it in at the right angle and it's the rest of the space mm. that's an issue mm. so sometimes it, it is a case of they're going to try it and if it doesn't work for them they're going to return it and yes for retailers that is incredibly frustrating but it's just a small part of the bigger picture mm. okay um your next question um how do you compete with brands selling on the internet? <laughs> that's that's always a um, something that comes up with independent retailers, and <sighs> we have no choice. You know, the brands are not going to stop selling online, and you know there are times when it is incredibly frustrating, um, particularly if a brand is struggling with stock for retailers and I'm sure that any retailers listening will probably be able to guess some of the brands that are in this situation but they've got it in stock on their website but we have to wait I, it has been three months for a product to come through but they're selling it direct and that is incredibly frustrating but at the same time it's also marketing in that your consumer is going to see those products that are available as well. And often those brands that are selling direct are doing quite a lot of marketing as well. So it's kind of twofold. Do I wish none of them sold directly? Well, that would be an ideal world, but it's not going to happen. So we just kind of have to deal with it. And, you know, there are some retailers who won't deal with those brands that do sell directly. We do. Um, you know, and I think that's a, a case of you, as a retailer, you have to decide whether that's a route that you want to go down. Um, does that make sense? Absolutely. Hamish, I love that question. Um, he says, great approach and overview of the current retail climate, Joe. With the lockdown earlier on in the year, can we see be seeing a baby boom? Are you seeing any signs of this? Hi, Hamish. Hope you're well. Um, but the baby boom's not down to me, I'd just like to point out, will not be down to me. But yes, I do envisage that there will be a baby boom. And I just wonder whether people would have put it off during the first lockdown because they thought this would all just disappear and go away and they were going to wait. So it does make me wonder whether actually our bigger baby boom is going to be in another six to nine months from now where people realise that actually COVID is not going away or it seems very unlikely that it's going away. So for those families and those couples, are they going to just be going, well, do you know what? We're just going to get on with it now. And, you know, it is what it is. I think we're all a lot more used to not being able to see people, however frustrating it is. You know, that whole going through childbirth without your, your family around you and your friends, is it becoming a little bit more of a norm? You know, most people are good at Zoom now and team meets and things like that. So, yes, Hamish. I think there will be a baby boom. <laughs> I think we'll see a, a baby boom sort of January, February time. Um, but I think that might just be the start of it, which in fairness for retailers and manufacturers, that's a bit of good news. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> Kamish says, great to hear, fingers crossed. Um, okay, so uh, it's interesting that uh, you've identified the car boot fitting problem. Um, apparently there's a compatibility list with, uh, that's similar to that with um, car seats. Um, so that's a, that's a little interesting snippet there. Um, okay, um, Kerry says, Joe, are you finding that parents to be are now more confused than ever when it comes to the choice available in choosing their pram? How do you combat that? Um. I don't think they are more confused because I think for me, before they've come into store, they've done a lot more research because they've had a lot more time on their hands. So I'm finding more and more people have read reviews, followed brands on Facebook. They ask their friends more because they've got more time on their hands. So they've, they've had that opportunity to do more research. So I don't think they're any more confused than they were. Um, 
uh, to be honest, um, I don't know if they're less confused, but I don't think they're personally, I haven't found them to be any more confused. You know, but bear in mind, there are some retailers out there who've been doing this a lot longer than me. So they may see the confusion more, start, more noticeably than I do. Okay. Um, Jonathan asks, which brands are not discounted on the web? I think that, that's a really tricky question. And, uh, you know, without going and, and having a look, there are various brands that have told me over the last two years that they're never discounted on the web. I would be very careful to name any brands that are never discounted because I've often seen them. It tends to be on a Friday night discounted when the brands have gone home and it's a little less noticeable, shall we say. Um, but, you know, there, there are brands that say they're not discounted um, around, but I wouldn't be able to name them. Okay, very diplomatic. Um, <laughs> what seems to be the general split between bundles, including car seats, compared to buying a stroller and a seat to match? Um, when we launched, I was very surprised at the number of people who just walked in and they just wanted a bundle. Um, for a lot of people, I mean, your car seat is perhaps the most important thing you will ever buy as a parent. Your pushchair looks lovely, gets you from A to B. You know, different comfort, different rides, etc. But your car seat potentially is the thing that will save your baby's life. And in store, it's a lot easier to get that message across. But obviously online, you know, that is more difficult. Lots of brands will put a car seat with their flagship pushchair. There may not be the best car seat that they could put in. And I think that's that's really quite disappointing. But I know why it is, because it's to bring the price of the bundle down. However, more and more brands are beginning to put in their bundle an eye-sized car seat, which I think is a really great start. You know, it's not just about price, it's about safety. And eye-sized seats are obviously coming down in price, you know, to where they were two, three years ago. But I okay. think people, people have a bundle, it's easy isn't it? It's a bit like the Marks and Spencer's meal for two that you just go, you don't have to think, you don't have to wander around. Um, but yeah. should they do that? Probably should look a bit more in depth at their car seat, please. Yeah, I guess it's people that feel slightly um, insecure about their purchase would get a bundle. Um, people that um, perhaps do need that advice. Um, okay, so Karen, I think asking, oh, sorry, carry on. No, I was just going to say, I think people have this concept that they're car seat has to match their pushchair in fabrics but actually as soon as you take off your carry cart or your seat unit you you for most brands you can't actually see whatever color you had on there and until you explain that to parents that you know you could have a bright pink car seat or a bright blue car seat but all you can see is the chassis of your pushchair and they go oh yeah no you're absolutely right i think there is this mental thing that you have to have it all to match whereas actually you don't mm. okay um, Kerry summed up my life. Um, do you find that they come into store with one brand in mind and then change their mind when they visit the store? That's uh, one of the things that infuriates my husband. I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, so people do that. Yeah, we're, we're women and, you know, most of our customers are women and they're pregnant. So, yeah, they have every right to walk in and change their mind. And it is about this whole in-store experience, touching and feeling and you know, what suits one person might be the perfect push chair for one person isn't necessarily the perfect push chair for another. We've got a test track um, and weighted dolls. And we often find that people give those things a push. They've got their heart set on and they're actually, no, this, this is too heavy for me. But you can't see that on a picture and people don't actually read the specifications for things you need to touch and you need to feel. So, yeah, we find lots of customers change their mind once they've come into store and had a look around. Is that a consideration? I'm going to go back to the car boot thing again. Um, is that a consideration when people are perhaps purchasing online? It's the whole weight thing. They're just not checking out how much it weighs and they're surprised when it when they get it delivered, um, how heavy it is. Um, I think for some and for some brands more than others, I, I think people have had a lot more time on their hands. So they'll order a couple of push chairs and then decide when they've got it at home because they know the regulations of um, distance selling. So they'll just send back whatever they don't want, um, you know, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Um, and I think for a lot of people, if you think they, a lot of people became pregnant at the beginning of lockdown 
And they never even really looked at a pushchair. They might have known their friend's got a silver cross, but they might not know whether it was a, I don't know, a pioneer or a wave or, you know, they got, you know, a baby star, but they don't know the different actual models of the pushchair. So until you're in that market to purchase a pushchair, you know, you might know that they've got four wheels and some have got three wheels. You've heard of some of the big brands, but not the smaller brands or what your best friend's got, but not the individual model. So I think it's really hard for people who've fallen pregnant and have purchased during lockdown. Mm. Um, okay, we're running out of time now, but we've got one last question. Um, Paul says, with mother care closing and consumers perhaps looking to shop more locally um, and visit stores, um, have you seen new categories growing as consumers look for a one-stop shop, like feeding, weaning, carriers, smaller, lower price points? Yeah, I think, I think obviously with the demise of Babies R Us and mother care, um, you know, people have looked at that replacement and being able to go to one place. And a lot of your big nationals don't have the range that your independents have. And they certainly, I would suggest they don't have the knowledge and the specialist knowledge, particularly about your car seats, your push chairs. I mean, baby carriers is, is a massive thing, you know, that people need training on as well. But also it is those pickup items because the only other place to go to pick up those items, unfortunately, is the supermarket. So if they can pick up those small weaning products at the same time as, you know, buying their pushchair and their blankets and their nursery furniture, you know, then why not, you know, for us as retailers, it's about upping their basket size. They may not have come in for, um, I don't know, a weaning cup, but if they spot it there and go, we're gonna need one of those, then if they purchase from, you know, your retailers, that's much better. Okay, Joe. it's been great getting some insights from you and everyone's saying just how um, helpful it's been. Um, if, people think of <laughs> if people think of questions afterwards, uh, like I do, oh, I should have asked this, how can they can get in touch with you? So you can either contact me on our Facebook page at Pushchair Expert, or you can send an email to hello at pushchairexpert.com um, or you can ring me. <laughs> <laughs> just just find me just find me or message me or what have you um, um but you know we're always quite open and willing to chat and you know we've learned so much over the last two years and i will learn so much over the next two years and 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 and, and i do think it's just about embracing whatever we learn some things we'll do wrong we all do whether it's a brand a manufacturer or or a retailer you know some things will work and some things won't and it's about working out what works for you as an individual brand or you as an individual retailer we're all different yeah okay that's brilliant joe thanks so much for your time everyone thanks so yeah. much for joining in with us um and everyone have a great evening we'll take care thanks Bye -bye. for chatting everybody <laughs> cheers, cheers take care